Hey guys, Mr. Bankberg here. In lesson 2.1, we're going to be taking a look at some quadratic functions and later on some modeling and application stuff. Here in part one, our two objectives are to analyze graphs of quadratic functions and then to write some quadratic functions in what is called standard form. Before we get into these quadratic functions, I want to talk a little bit about polynomial functions and how we classify those things. And what we're talking about when we classify polynomial functions is we're looking at their degree. Now what the degree means is it's the highest power of an x in whatever function we're taking a look at. So if we're talking about just a constant function, something like f of x equals 7, there is no x inside of this function, so we say it has a degree of 0. If we look at a linear function, so like 7x plus 3, there is an x in here, and the power on that x is just a 1, a first power, so we would say that it has a degree of 1. Well, these quadratics that we're going to be dealing with, so if we build this function up a little bit more, so maybe it looks like 7x squared plus 3x plus 4, the highest power on the x in there, it's got an x squared, so we would say that this has a degree of 2. So we've seen one example of what a quadratic function could look like. On the screen now, there's a bunch of different examples of what quadratics could look like. So we've got a function g of x where it's 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 3. We're actually going to focus on that form in just a little bit. Uh, this is what's called standard form of a quadratic. But all of these things on our screen represent different forms of quadratics since they all have that x squared second degree polynomial look to them. So our definition for what a quadratic function is going to be, we've got this f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and we just need to make sure that that a value on our x squared isn't zero, otherwise we wouldn't have an x squared in there at all. We have to have that x squared in there for this thing to be considered a quadratic function. And now I'm hoping by now that we all know that the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola, so a kind of u shape or bowl shaped graph and a couple of properties that those parabolas are going to have. There's this line that runs down the middle of a parabola, which we call the axis of symmetry. Uh, so we could say that our parabolas are symmetric with respect to this line, meaning that the left half of the parabola is going to look exactly like the right half of the parabola. There's also a point on the parabola, which is either going to be the highest point or the lowest point on the graph, depending on which way this parabola opens up. It's also the point where this axis of symmetry is going to intersect the actual graph, and we call that point the vertex of the parabola. And I mentioned that that vertex could be either a maximum or a minimum point, and like I said, it all depends on which way the parabola opens up, whether it opens up or opens down. If that a value on our x squared is a positive number, then our parabola is going to open upwards, so it's going to look like a U-shape. And then that vertex is going to be at the bottom of our curve, so that would make it a minimum value. But if that A value out in front is a negative number, then our parabola is going to open downward, so it looks more like an N shape. Well, now that vertex is at the highest point on the parabola, so we would call that thing our maximum value. So just a quick review on graphing some different quadratic things. We're going to compare four different graphs. So we're going to have our parent function, uh, this x squared function, so just our normal parabola. And then we're going to make some changes to it. So we're going to multiply it by this 1 third and see what that does to our graph. We're going to multiply 2 times x squared, see what that does to our graph. And then there's a couple of things going on here. So we're taking x plus 2, squaring it, and then subtracting 3. And I'm actually going to graph these out on my calculator just to make it a little bit easier to look at. Okay, so you can see that I already have all four of those functions typed in. And this is really tying in some of the stuff we talked about back in chapter one. So here's our normal x squared function. If we take that thing and multiply it by a third, well, we should recognize that as a vertical shrink. So our graph is going to get shorter and wider. In this other one, we've got 2 times x squared, so this one is going to be a vertical stretch, so our graph should get taller. And this last one, we've got this plus 2 inside of parentheses, so I'm hoping we can recognize that as a left shift 2 spaces. And we also have this minus 3 going on outside, so we should be able to recognize that as a down shift 3 spaces. So if we graph this out, okay, that black one is just our normal x squared graph. The blue one is 1 third times x squared, so we can see that our graph got shorter and wider. 
the red graph is two times x squared, so it got taller and skinnier. And then the green one, remember, was that left shift two spaces and down shift three spaces. So we've got all these different parabolas given to us by the functions that we were graphing. Now earlier I mentioned something called the standard form of a quadratic function and the kind of base definition for what I'm talking about for standard form of a quadratic is f of x equals a times x minus h in parentheses squared plus k and the nice thing about standard form of a quadratic function is it lets us know right away where the vertex of our function is we just have to look at those h and k values and it also tells us where the axis of symmetry is. We just have an x equals h equation since our axis of symmetry is gonna be a straight up and down vertical line. Now, we're not always gonna be given quadratic functions in this standard form. A lot of times they'll be given to us in like ax squared plus bx plus c form. So in order to rewrite a quadratic equation in this standard form, we're gonna use a process called completing the square and the next few examples that I'm going to go through are all about completing the square to rewrite quadratic functions in standard form. So in this example, we've got f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 6. And I'm going to go through that completing the square process in order to rewrite this quadratic equation in standard form. Now one thing we need to make sure before we start going through this completing the square stuff is we want to look at the a value on our x squared and for completing the square to work we need that a value to be a 1 it just makes the factoring work out a lot better as we go through the process so on this one we already have an a value of 1 so there's not any extra work that we need to do um, the next example that I'm going to go through I'm going to throw a different a value in front of there so we're gonna to have to take an extra step in the process but like I said, this one, a value is already one, so I'm just gonna jump right into the completing the square. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna group these first two terms together in our quadratic function, because we're gonna try to get this to factor out so that we can get that standard form look to it. Now we're actually gonna need to change this equation a little bit so that we get it to factor out nicely. And I'm gonna use a process called adding zero. So remember, we need our equations to stay balanced. So whatever we do to one side of an equation, we have to do to the other side of an equation. Well, we can kind of get around those rules a little bit by using this adding zero process. And I'll show you what I mean as we go through it. So what we wanna look at first to figure out what we're gonna add to this equation is I wanna focus on this B value. And in order to figure out how to get this thing to factor out nicely, we're gonna take our B value and divide it by two and then square it. So if we're talking about this B value, we've got eight divided by two and we're gonna square that. So eight divided by two is four squared is 16. So we're gonna do something with a 16 in here to get it to factor out nicely. And what we're gonna do inside of these parentheses, I'm just gonna copy down the x squared plus eight x. And we're gonna add on this 16 because that's where we're gonna get our nice factoring from in just a little bit. But I can't just add something to one side of the equation without throwing the balance off. So at the same time when I add this 16, I'm also going to subtract 16. Okay, this is the whole adding zero thing. If I add something and then subtract it right away, I didn't change the balance of the equation. So I'm gonna close off the parentheses now. And remember, we still had this plus six hanging on the end. So we added this extra 16 in here to get our factoring to work out nicely. So I'm actually gonna regroup now the first three terms because I wanna focus on this x squared plus eight x plus 16 as far as factoring goes. If we're looking for something that multiplies to 16 and adds up to eight, we'd have x plus four and x plus four. But we're gonna rewrite that a little bit. It's a repeated factor, so x plus four times x plus four, we could rewrite that as x plus four squared. And then we've also got this outer set of parentheses with our minus 16 still hanging out in there, and then we still got that plus six on the very end. Now, in the next example, we're gonna have an A value out in front of here that we're gonna to have to redistribute through, but on this one, our A value is just one, so I can actually drop this outer set of parentheses. We don't actually need those things anymore, and that's gonna let us combine the like terms on the end, the minus 16 and the plus six, to get x plus four squared 
minus 10. So we just took that quadratic equation that we were given at the very beginning. We did this adding 0, completing the square process to rewrite this equation into x plus 4 squared minus 10. Well, now this is a quadratic in standard form. So some of the things that are nice about this is we're able to find our vertex pretty easily and we're also able to find that axis of symmetry. So for the vertex, remember, we're looking at those h and k values in the equation. So if we take a look at this one, our h value, it's what's being subtracted from the x. Well, right now I don't see subtraction. I see a plus 4. So in order to get that subtraction, we're actually going to need a minus 4. So it's kind of like a sign change on this h value. But the k value is going to stay exactly the same. So sign change on the h value, but the k value stays exactly the same. So the 4 becomes a negative 4, and the negative 10 stays the same. So this is going to be the vertex of our parabola. And if we want to figure out where the axis of symmetry is, we just go x equals our h value. So x equals negative 4. So vertex and axis of symmetry from the standard form of the quadratic equation. So here's our next example. We've got f of x equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 13. And we're going to do our completing the square again. But remember, on the last example, I said our a value, the number out in front, had to be a 1 before we could complete the square. So we're going to need to take an extra step at the beginning of this one before we can go through the whole adding 0, completing the square process. So what I see going on with these first two terms is we've got a GCF of 2 that we can factor out. So we could rewrite this as 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 13. And now just like we did before, now that we have this a value of 1, I'm going to focus on this b value and go b divided by 2 squared to figure out what we're going to add and subtract inside of these parentheses. So the whole adding 0 thing to keep the balance on our equation. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So inside of our parentheses now, uh, we've got 2 times x squared plus 6x. Well, now we're going to add this 9 that we just found, but we also have to subtract the 9. Remember, add 0 so we don't throw the balance off. Close our parentheses, and then put the plus 13 on the end. Now remember, regroup some of this stuff, so these first three things, so that we can get it to factor out nicely. So multiply to 9 and add to 6, it'd be x plus 3 and x plus 3. So remember, we're going to rewrite that as x plus 3 squared. Well, we still have this outer set of parentheses with the 2. We still have this minus 9 inside of this parentheses. And we still have that plus 13 on the end. Now on the last one, we didn't have an a value on here, so we were just able to drop these outer parentheses and combine like terms on the end. But that's not the case here. We have this 2 out in front that we need to deal with before we can drop those outer parentheses. So I'm actually going to use a little distributive property and multiply it by this first thing, the x plus 3 squared, and also multiply the 2 by this negative 9. Now I don't want to change a whole lot with this first piece. Okay, if we just take 2 times x plus 3 squared, we get 2 times x plus 3 squared. But taking 2 times negative 9, we get negative 18. Since we distributed that 2, we're now allowed to drop the outer set of parentheses, which lets us combine like terms on the end with the negative 18 and the plus 13. So our final equation for this standard form, it's 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 5. And now that this is in standard form, we're able to identify the vertex and the axis of symmetry. So remember, for the h value inside of parentheses with our x, we want to do a sign change. So instead of a positive 3, our h value is going to be a negative 3. And k value on the end stays exactly the same. So the vertex is at negative 3, negative 5. Writing out the equation for the axis of symmetry, we go x equals our h value, which we just said was negative 3. So there's the vertex, there's the axis of symmetry. Okay, last example for this video, we're going to do some more completing the square. Um, on this one, we've already got an a value of 1. It looks like maybe somebody already did some factoring with a negative 1 out in front, which is good because we've got an a value of 1 in here. So we're just going to go ahead and group these first two things in our parentheses so that we can do our adding 0, completing the square thing. So remember, we need to look at this b value. So we've got negative 10. We're going to divide that by 2, 
and square it so that we can figure out what we're going to add and subtract for our completing the square. So just starting to write this thing out, negative parentheses, another parentheses, x squared minus 10x. Well, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5, and negative 5 squared is 25. So we're going to add 25, but then remember, subtract 25 right away. Close the parentheses, and then remember, we've got this plus 13 on the end, and close our very outer parentheses. So regroup some things in the middle. So now we're starting to get a lot of sets of parentheses in here, so we have to try to keep those things straight. So with this plus 25, multiplying to a positive 25 and adding up to a negative 10, we're going to get x minus 5 squared. Um, then we've got this other set of parentheses with our minus 25 in it. And then we've got our very outer parentheses with that negative 1 and our plus 13 on the end. Starting to simplify this down a little bit. I'm going to distribute this negative 1, but I'm going to have to distribute it to everything. So I'm going to distribute it to the x minus 5 squared, the negative 25, and all the way over to that plus 13. So we end up with negative x minus 5 squared. Uh, negative 1 times negative 25 becomes plus. 25 and negative 1 times the 13 on the end becomes a minus 13. Combining the like terms on the end, the plus 25 and the minus 13, we get negative parentheses x minus 5 squared plus 12. Finding the vertex, we're going to grab that h value and our k value. So now our h value, remember sign change on here, it was a negative 5, so we're going to make it a positive 5. The 12 is going to stay the same. And writing out the equation for the axis of symmetry, we get x equals 5. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. Thanks for watching, guys.